Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome. This is Whistlegeek Martial Arts Radio, and on today's episode, Andrew and I are talking about games. Games for kids. Kids of all ages. We're going to give you some examples of games that you might consider implementing in your classes, and we're also going to talk about why games are so important. If you're new, let me welcome you. Thank you for coming by. Thank you for joining us here at Whistlekick. Our goal is to connect, educate, and entertain the martial artists of the world. And the first thing I should do to connect you is to let you know who I am. I'm Jeremy, Jeremy Lesniak, founder of Whistlekick, host of Martial Arts Radio, Radio, and I am joined by my amazing producer (laughs) and oft co-host, Andrew Adams. Hello, Andrew. Hello, Jeremy. What's going on? We're going to talk about games. I'm excited. (laughs) Maybe maybe that's why I'm being extra goofy at the top here. I'm not sure. Yep. I mean, it's important. Kids kids come in all shapes and sizes. I've often I've often said growing old is mandatory. Growing up, optional. I proved that. Yep. That's all. That was a short joke. You missed it. What I missed it. You're right. What did you say? I didn't really grow up. Oh, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> it's a miracle we get anything done. <laughs> but we do. Go to whistlekick.com, see all the things that we're doing to connect, educate, and entertain you, the traditional martial artists of the world. And if you find something in our store that you like, that's one of the ways you can support us. Use the code PODCAST15. Gets you, gets you 15% off a, a hoodie or a t-shirt or some protective gear or a training program or any number of other things that you'll find over there. Now, what if you really like the show? You're like, man, this is the best show ever. And I want to listen to every single episode that's ever been. Well, you could check out your podcast app, but you could also go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. It's the place where you're going to find all kinds of great stuff related to this episode, including every episode we have ever done. And while you're there, you can sign up for the newsletter. You can leave us a tip. So lots, lots of good stuff there. If you like what we do, if our mission to get everyone in the world to train for at least six months resonates for you, if you agree that martial arts brings out better versions of ourselves, please consider supporting us, whether it's buying something or sharing something. Maybe you want to recommend somebody for the show. Maybe you want to buy me a beer. Maybe you want to buy Andrew a beer through our Patreon. P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash whistlekick. And and we we could indirectly say that yes, that money can flow because if you choose to buy beer, absolutely. Because yeah, yeah, for sure. That's where you go. Patreon.com slash whistlekick. I had to pull it back. You can get it for as little as two bucks a month at five dollars. You get start getting bonus episodes and merch, and it just it goes up for there. We work really hard to make sure there's great content, stuff you're not gonna find elsewhere in the Patreon. But if you want the whole list, all of the things that you can do to support Whistlekick in our mission, go to the family page, whistlekick.com slash family, weekly updates, additional, exclusive. And I don't mean like exclusive is like we'll put it on Patreon and we'll put it on the family page and we put it in these other places because it's not on the podcast. I mean, no, all of these places get different content. So go check out the family page. Kids, as you said, come in all ages. Yep. You can be an adult kid. You can be a mature kid. Mm -hmm. You can be a big kid. You can be a immature kid. All of these. I think for you and I, and for a lot of people, initially we think kid, we think child. Yep. But I think the term has changed. I think there's a, um, a more colloquial version of the term kid that applies to someone with youthful spirit. Yep, yep. I think a uh, listener of the show, Stephen Watson, said it perfectly when he said there is a difference between childish and childlike. Mm-hmm. And uh, when he said that, I was like, oh, I love that quote. And, and it's very true. <clears throat> yeah. To be a kid is to be childlike. Yep. And what is it about a kid that I think so many of us don't want to let go of? It's it's a sense of wonder, of discovery, of play. 
of valuing things that we're often told, oh, but, you know, someday you have to grow up and stop doing that. Hmm. As if the role, the, the entire experience of adulthood is meant to not be necessitates fun. being, yeah, it, it can't be fun. Indeed. It has to be serious. It, it's all work all the time. And well, if you work well or efficiently, it's plenty of time to play. Absolutely. And why, why would we want to, I mean, why would we want to do that in karate class or whatever mm. martial art class you're teaching? Why, why would we're there to learn how to punch and kick and do techniques? Why, why should we play games? We've talked about this on the show a bit and every single expert that I've ever seen recognizes that when enjoyment becomes a component in the education people learn more hmm? they learn faster they retain better however you want to look at it and it is also a very natural way of learning to play yep especially if those games which we will talk about throughout mm -hmm. this this episode if those games have a martial component to it just because it's a game doesn't mean it has to be devoid of learning. That's the thing I think that many instructors don't get. They're like, the kids don't come to my karate school and learn how to play games. They learn to, how to do karate. Well, why can't they do both? Yeah. Every school I've ever been in. Actually, no, I won't say that. I have been in schools that didn't play any games. I can say for a fact that the schools that utilized games appropriately there are two things I could say about them. They had better retention mm -hmm. and the people learned more. Yep. We as human beings want to have fun. It is, it is instinctive. If you have a choice between doing two things, one that is enjoyable, one that is not, you will choose the one that is enjoyable, mm -hmm. everything else being equal, because why would you not? Right. Animals. If you observe animals, watch any young animals, they play. And guess what? The parents will play with them too. Why? Because it's a way of them learning. Any predators teach their kids how to prey. Hey, you're back. By <clears throat> mocking up a predation scenario. In a similar way that we teach self-defense with freeform scenarios like sparring. If anyone does not see the correlation there, I, I, I don't know what else I can say. To me, it's very clear. Yeah. And I, th I think most people will get that. Now, keep in mind, because a lot of people are resistant to change, and you may be listening to this, maybe you're an instructor and you're thinking, well, okay, I'll concede Andrew's point that, yes, there could be some value in some games, but... I still need to teach serious things. <clears throat> We're not suggesting that your class has to change entirely. Yeah. We're not suggesting that it, you go from bowing into games to bowing out. Yeah, exactly. Games are a class of drill, just as forms or basics yep. or um, sparring mm -hmm. are classes of drills. <clears throat> games are a type of drill. And... Here's the thing that I think is most important. There are days when, especially if you're working with youth, where through no fault of your own, the class starts to get away from you. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was the weather. Maybe it's the full moon. By the way, if you don't think the full moon affects children, you don't teach children. Absolutely, it does. <laughs> um, maybe it's, you know, two days before Christmas break yep. and they're going nuts, right? Sometimes they're just crazy and you need help. This is where, okay, getting them to be serious isn't happening. Let's either switch into a game or let's dangle the carrot of a game. If everyone can focus, we will play a game. Mm -hmm. Right? Is it, Do you do that? Is that how you use them? Yes, absolutely. I mean, I, I try and for me in, in our kids' class, I know that the last 10, maybe 15 minutes, it's going to be 
game a either a single game or a couple of games and the kids know that too and mm-hmm. i will sometimes get kids come can we play such and such today and could we play and you know what game i play depends on a lot of different factors sometimes the number of kids i have in the class and uh and they have i have trained them to we we talked in a, in a previous episode about um not asking when you're going to test and if you do Mm -hmm. then you know you're going to go back Uh, they've they've now learned don't ask me what game we're going to play because if you do then we're not going to play that game Mm -hmm. um but i know the games that they like to play uh and that they enjoy doing but i try really hard to make sure that the game has value to them and not isn't just in air quotes just fun that it is they are learning something and i will often tell them this is why we're playing this game so that they can then correlate, oh, we're doing this game because it's fun, but this is also going to help me with X, Y, Z. Not every time, but often. If we think about a lot of the games, what what are skills that they're pulling from them, even if they're not martial applicable? Reaction time? Yep. Awareness? A big one that we do, work? A big one that we do in our school? Jump rope. We just... I, I'll grab a pair if I don't have a, a teaching uh, a assistant to help me out. I'll grab a parent. They'll grab the other end of the rope. We'll swing the rope, and they have to either run through and not get hit by the rope, or and depending on which way the rope is going, they might have to jump over the rope to get through, or mm-hmm. they have to jump in, jump a few times, and jump out. The really good kids, the older kids, I'll have them jump in, start jumping. And I'll have another student toss them a ball that they have to catch and then mm. toss back. So they're focusing on multiple skills. Their, yeah. their feet have to do different things from their hands. That is a valuable skill, but it's also fun. Right. Right. My, generally speaking, I don't, I don't do a lot of what I would formally term games, but I try to bring the energy mm-hmm. and the, reward right that that balance of input reward rules sort of thing into the drills that i run with people whether they are adults or children because people want to know what success looks like and that's something that we we've talked about that quite a bit in martial arts um i'm sorry on the show about martial arts that we we don't often do a good job of defining success outside of rank games are nice because you know did, if the rope hits your foot they did not win. Yep. Yep. If they dropped the ball, they did not win. But if they avoided the rope and didn't drop the ball and whatever else you give them as parameters, they win. That's nice to know. You can feel good about that. And if you didn't quote win the game, kids are conditioned from a young age. Games really don't matter. Correct. So they're not super sad. You don't yell at them, but now they have something they can work on. Exactly. Yep. So that's an example, one example that, that I use in our in our school. Um, sensei says is a very common one, right? Yeah. Uh, sensei because I teach in a, in a Japanese yeah. you know, karate school, so sensei is the right term. It's basically Simon Says, and uh, you can make that as difficult or as challenging as you want for your students. It's one of my favorite games because you don't have to change anything. You can do everything else you were going to do. Yep. But it forces a component of awareness. And I will off, often use it for practicing our techniques. Sensei says yes. rising block. Sensei says rising block. Sensei says middle block. Sensei says down block. And I can still mm-hmm. work them through their techniques and correct things if need be. Mm-hmm. But they see it as a game. And what makes that a game? What happens if they move wrong? What do you do? Sometimes I'll have them sit out. Sometimes I'll be like, "Uh," and they like think they got one over on me, you know, like because it's fun. But there's no punishment for doing it wrong, really. Not not a punishment, but there is a consequence, right? Like they know that they did something wrong. Yep. Right. Whereas if we're talking about improving your rising block 
they probably don't know they did their rising block wrong because if they did they probably wouldn't have done it that way right and so when we start to be able to correlate um awareness to output tell me that a student who is more engaged more aware is not going to pick up more of what you're saying exactly they're not going to be more observant all right so i've noticed a bunch of you are doing your rising blocks like this if you do your rising block like this everybody put your hand on your head okay that's wrong everybody put your hand up like this at an angle from here on if you don't do this when i say sensei says rising block i'm going to point it out and you're going to whatever the consequence is yep Right. So then, oh, OK, I got to be here. So now they're hyper focused on that component in a way that let's be honest, if you were correcting rising blocks, walking up and down the floor in just a dr drill scenario. Hey, I need you to keep your hand up here. I need you to keep your hand up here. And it comes down. Right. And if you're just listening, you, you probably can't hear me banging myself on the head with my wrist because that's a great place to keep your arm if you're a small child and exerting as little energy as possible. It doesn't have to be complex. Yeah. It's the energy, it's the attitude that you bring to it. I believe anything can be a game. Forms can be a game. Well, you know what? We have a couple of uh, people have sent in some of their games. Nice. Let's and... let's let's go over them. I bet there are some in there that I don't know. Yeah. So um, I've got two sheets here, so I'm going to kind of go back and forth. Wow. I think. But uh, this game is from uh, Kelly Thomas, past mm -hmm. recent guest of the show. That's right. Uh, about a month and a half ago, her episode came out. Um, she has a couple of patterns, games, or forms. Uh, this one's called You're Dead. <laughs> she says, this hey. is a, what's that? I said, okay. All right. So like this, is, title. This, this is a patterns game to remind students that during our patterns, we are doing half of a choreographed fight. And therefore, if you make a mistake, then quote, you're dead because you either missed an attack or or by doing a wrong block uh, or a wrong attack, uh, your your attack missed the person. Hmm. Um, it's played by students. This is played by students coming forward to try to do their pattern without any mistakes. The higher the rank, the more nitpicky she is. Mm -hmm. uh, if they make a mistake, then she yells, "You're dead!" And then she has a Nerf gun, and they get shot. <laughs> uh, and then she checks in with them to see what they did if they knew what they did was wrong. And she said, believe it or not, this is a favorite of the kids. Yeah. Now there's an important piece here that I think people might say, well, what's the difference between that and simply correcting someone? It's definitely more fun to get shot with a Nerf gun. It, it is, but there it leverages something that is, is really core to human psychology. The Nerf gun and the playfulness overcome the embarrassment. Mm hmm but it's still it's you getting called out in front of everyone. What is the chance that you're going to make that same mistake again? Yep. Yep. Significantly lower. Yep. If you've ever taught forms to people, forms, patterns, whatever you want to call them, you know that there are certain people who have struggled with learning a certain portion or making a certain adjustment in a movement. We generally make those adjustments with respect and honoring their dignity we don't drag them up in front of the class and yell you're dead <laughs> which is a fun way of saying you screwed that up yeah you made a mistake yep but by with this kind of interesting combination which i, I think is fascinating we are giving them the emotional response that they're going to remember but doing it in a way that is also playful yep. so they're not embarrassed yeah so she had she has one more patterns or kata or forms game called patterns feud students get broken down into teams spreading out ages and ranks evenly between the teams one student from each team making sure they're similar age and rank uh get separated and then she will ask them a pattern or a taekwondo question the first Per, so one person goes up from each team. Mm -hmm. The first person to key up gets the gets to attempt to do the pattern without saying the name or the technique that was asked. If they get it right, then their team gets a point. If they're wrong, then the other team can steal the point 
by doing the correct pattern or technique. Mm. So it's kind of like Family Feud, but it's pattern yeah. feud, right? Uh, that's great because it, it gamifies learning something that they – or reworking in their head what it is that they need to do. Yeah. And it, it sounds like we're bringing this game into play when there's maybe a bit more uh, verbal or academic element. Yeah. Uh, for those of you who who – don't train in, in one of these styles. Some styles, including ITF Taekwondo, a style that Kelly and I share, has uh, definitions, meanings for the, the forms, the patterns. Mm -hmm. And so a common question that will come up at testings and at other times is, you know, what's the, what's the definition or the meaning of you'll gook, mm -hmm. you know, one of the forms. And we're expected to know those things. So it makes for a great question, you know, in, in that style of game, because everybody's hearing it. But if you know that you might be playing this game in the near future, maybe you're more likely to review yeah. your materials at yeah, home. Absolutely. So another game that I play in our school is called the sword game. Okay. The sword game is really easy. You're standing up at the front of the room with a sword. So this is my, for those watching, this is my foam padded sword. Uh, and it I actually has a Japanese wrapped handle. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, it's foam. And it's, you know, this one's about three feet long. And I stand up in front of the room and all of the students are, you know, away from me, but just standing in a, you know, away apart from each other. And when they know that when I lift the sword over my head, they have to jump to the right or to the left before my sword comes down. And so I'm having them work, work mm. their footwork. And when I hold the, the sword kind of like a baseball bat, they have to duck down before my sword mm. comes across. Otherwise their head gets chopped off because you know, it's a sword, it's a sword, right? Right. And every time I bring, uh, uh, I'll come down low and bring the sword really low, they have to jump up. They have to jump over the sword. Now they're not anywhere near me because there's a huge you know, group of them, but I will go through these motions and I'll start going faster until, you know, they don't, they do the wrong thing or, and here's where I bring in a little bit of awareness. Some of them at first they'll start to jump and they'll jump and turn sideways or turn around because they're kids. And I tell them, you can't do that. You can't turn your back to me because I'm going to start going faster. And so they learn to move their body, but keep their eyes on me. And then when it gets down to one person, I will stand directly in front of that person, of that child. So if they, if I come up over, swing overhead and they don't jump out of the way, I would actually hit them on the head. Now, obviously I'm not hitting them hard and it's a foam sword. So it's, you know, not a big deal, but for them, it's You fun. don't cleave their skull in two as punishment? No, although we make okay. jokes because the parents are often sitting there, you know, if I yeah. swing sideways and they don't duck down and I was like, you know, I just chopped their head off and I'll turn to the parents. Well, you don't have to feed him tonight because he doesn't have a mouth because his head's gone. So, and you could use anything. You could just use a pool noodle. I have another longer sword here that's a little more intricate. Oh, yeah. And it's much, yep. much, much bigger. But it's just a fun little game that you can play with very few students. Yeah. Some of the games, like the Patterns Feud, is great. But our kids' class doesn't have really enough kids to be able to do that game with. The sword game, you can play with only three kids in class. Or you can play with 50 kids. Exactly. The, the, the part I like about that is that you are you're just one sword you're asking them to imagine correct you're you're asking them to fill in the realism and apply uh their own understanding of what the consequence would be as motivation to act in a fast manner you can do that to just about anything yep and so you know for those folks listening or, or watching that might be a bit resistant to some of these um true games recognize it with something like that it's really just the way you present the material yeah you know if you wanted people to practice stepping back into a, a front stance and doing a low block you could stand up at the front of the room and you could throw a front kick at them mm -hmm. and if you tell them if i kick you before you block me you're, you're dead out. you're out yeah 
right? Like it doesn't have to be complex and formal with lots of rules. Yeah. Just a different mindset. Do you have any that, uh, that you used to play or that you have taught? Sensei says was the big one when I yeah. was a kid. It, and, and I think it's because my instructors had a, a, a bit of a balanced perspective on games. You know, what we've kind of talked about, like, yes, I recognize the value in, in creating some humor and some laughter, some fun with what we're doing but I don't want to get too far out. Um, I have seen Duck, Duck, Goose mm -hmm. played with a martial element where um, the person, if the person is caught, they have to spar a point. Mm, interesting. You know, yeah. Something like that. Um, my Taekwondo instructor does a lot of reaction and... Yeah, we call them reaction drills, like uh, kick softball, you know, throwing kind of foam balls. Okay. And they have to kick them out of the air. Um, I like that one. I might do that dodge one. Dodgeball. Dodgeball is one of my favorites. So in our school, I've changed the rules to dodgeball, but go ahead with yours and I'll tell you mine. Pretty straightforward. Uh, instructors get to take out some aggression by throwing balls at children. Okay. So in our school, I've changed... These are softer balls. These are not like playground yeah, yeah, rubber yeah. balls where you can hurt people. So the kids... This, right now, this is their favorite game. It's called Dojo Ball. Because, again, we're... You're in a dojo. Karate sure. school. And uh, they start... Everybody starts on one side of the room, and there's one ball in the center. And when I say go, they have to go... The first person to get the ball, they have the ball. And they can run. There's no sides. It gets everyone for themselves. And if the ball is thrown at you and it hits you in your arm, you just can't use that arm anymore. Mm -hmm. If the ball is thrown at you and it hits you in the leg, you just can't use that leg. You can still hop around. You can still catch a ball with one arm. Mm -hmm. If they hit your other leg, then you are, you're on your knees trying to shuffle around, but you still have this one is, hand. This is having a holy grail flashbacks. For yes. Me. And believe it or not, I have seen a person catch a ball with no arms and no legs and wow. the other person was out wow because they caught the ball so um again this helps to teach awareness because people are all over you have to keep your uh, you're facing forward the person i've had to institute a couple of rules because uh in a mixed class with bigger kids and little kids the, the big kids with long legs would just run after the little kids and the little kids are turning their back and running away. Mm -hmm. And so the big kids would just like plop them on the back. And so I, at first I initiated a rule that uh, you can't throw the ball if anyone is within three to five feet of you, mm -hmm. which forced you to actually work on some accuracy on your throwing. But then if you had the ball, everyone started racing to get close to you so you couldn't throw the ball at them. Because kids will find a way to yep. loopholes, right? So now the game would go on forever because everyone would just stay close to the guy with the ball. So then the new rule is no one can be within three feet, three to five feet of each other, period. So they have to stay away from each other. And it forces people to throw the ball. Mm -hmm. But it's a little more fun. It's still dodgeball. Yeah. But it's not teams, it's one on. It's everyone for themselves. And if you catch the ball, you're fine. But if you try and catch the ball with your hands and drop it, you can't use your hands anymore. Thank you. Do we have any more? Were there we any more just, just a couple more. You know, I don't want this. Okay. We could probably go on for hours. Yeah. And hours. We we could we could. But I know people spent the time writing these. Here's, up, a, here's sure a really good one that um, actually Noah, uh, listener of the show, Noah, um, plays a lot of games in his. Yeah. classes and he gave one that he calls fast hands kelly submitted the exact same one basically called alligator mm. and i love this i'm definitely doing this one tonight uh in noah's he just uses empty hands in kelly's called alligator you take two like kicking paddles mm -hmm. and you hold them out like this noah said it like i caught a fish this big hold your hands here mm -hmm. So, and then the person standing across from them has to punch or do a kick or whatever. And the other person holding their hands out 
has to try and clap their hands and, mm. and so it's a reaction thing. I like the I like the paddles for both people. Yeah, exactly. It's a reaction for both people, but I like the paddles because that's just really fun and um so fast hands or alligator. Um Noah and I both play push hands where you would have mm -hmm. the kids stand across from each other and you they can only high five or high ten and try and make the other person lose their balance. Mm -hmm. So that's a really fun one. We in our school play one that Noah also plays. He calls it Dragon Tales. We call it the rag game, where you essentially take a rag and put it on someone's belt, and everyone has mm. to try and get the rag. Yeah. Um, now, Noah's gone to the point of like making it a little more rule-orientated. Um, they're given a bandana. The objective is to pull other people's tails, because it's a dragon tail. Uh, while protecting their own tail. So in our school, we often will have one person with a tail, and they have to defend from everyone. In Noah's version, everyone has a tail, and so you're trying mm -hmm. to protect your own while keeping everyone yep. else away. Um, then you can. there are different versions. You can have warring clans where they're split into teams, and so it's kind of team on team. Uh, so that's pretty good. And then Kelly also had one essentially uh, the same uh called flag taekwondo everyone gets with the hip and it's again essentially the same thing you you know and the concept is when you're sparring yes you have to be on the offense but you also have to be on the defense as well um mm -hmm. the last one we have a bunch more but i'm not going to get into all of them but another fun one around christmas time for those to celebrate christmas uh kelly does uh the 12 days on the first day of classes, my instructor gave to me, they have to pick something and they run through the 12 days of Christmas. And each time they have a different technique that they have to do. Oh, fun. And they continue to sing the song and have to do each of the techniques. So that's, oh, that's kind of fun. Yeah. And that, that's, so it's, it's becomes topical and you know, you're not going to do it year round. So it becomes special. I would encourage schools to start codifying some of these. There are games that you can play that fit into your curriculum and your culture. And how nice would it be for your newer instructors to not have to remember all the games that they ever learned, yep. but instead be given a list. And, you know, I, I think, I think it's easy to underestimate how much adults want to play games. They will tell you they don't want to. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. But, they they love playing games. They just don't want to admit it. And I think as well for instructors, they don't have to be, and I'm going to put in quotes, they don't have to be games, just skill drills. Here's one that we do. We have these foam balls in the school, and I will put the students turned away from each other so their backs are to each other. Mm -hmm. I'll place the ball between them on the lower back, and say, okay, get to the other side of the gym and back. Mm -hmm. If you drop the ball, pick it up and go again. So you have to work with partners and figure stuff out. By the way, the best one I ever saw was one. they both linked their arms together, and one person said, okay, jump up, and he just bent over and carried the person on their back. The ball still between them and just yeah. walked back and forth. But like those sorts of drills, or um, for the kids, I'll have them link arms. So there's one long mm -hmm. chain of kids and you give a hula hoop to the per person on one end and mm. say, get the hula hoop from one end to the other without letting go of your hands. Yep. And if you think that that doesn't have relevance to martial arts, it's because you don't understand uh, brain body development among children. Yep. I have kids, the little kids that don't know how to skip. Like they are still figuring out how their bodies move. The human body does not, or the human brain does not fully develop until 25. Genuinely, like, like, go, go look this up. That is the generally accepted, at least last time I did the research, generally accepted. This is why you get kids who you can pick up their leg and manipulate it through space. Now do this and they kick with the other leg because their brain is not linked up to their body in full. It's not, they're not just a tiny human. They're still being built. So don't be afraid to do drills that help them find where their body is because you know what you may not see the value in that but their parents do yep yep so when Did this they... episode when this episode comes out um 
if if you've listened this far, I'm going to be posting this episode on our Facebook page. Go in the comments if you have a game that you play. Put it in the comments. Let's let's make this episode not just the two of us talking about games we played or Kelly Thomas or Nordever. Like, yes, those games we talked about. But go in the chat. Tell us the games you play and how you play them. Yeah, absolutely. And and you're speaking of not not the Whistlekick Facebook page, but Facebook group Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio behind the scenes. That's correct. It's a yeah. private group. We'll let you in, but you still have to you have to jump in. Andrew, thank you for putting this together. This was a lot of fun and makes me want to go play games now. Thank you, Noah and Kelly. Thank you, Noah and Kelly. Audience, thank you for being part of this episode. If you want to show your support, remember you got lots of things you can do, family page, Patreon, all that good stuff. Check out whistlekickmartialartsradio.com for all the show notes. You're going to find stuff, just tons of stuff for every episode that we've done. Two things to keep in mind. If you have a martial arts school and you would like to grow that school, make more money, improve your culture, raise the standard of your instructors, anything like that or more, reach out. We do offer consulting services and frankly, we're good at it. Email me, jeremy at whistlekick.com. You might also email me if you would like to host a Whistlekick seminar, whether that includes me or me and Andrew or just Andrew. We got lots of options here. We enjoy doing these things. And that... that that takes us through to the end of another episode. I appreciate you being here. Until next time, train, train hard, hard smile, smile, and have a great, have a great day. day.